wake up in the morning, that eyes pop up, and I think, no, this is, this won't make my life peaceful until I do something. I think there are people, they're not anymore. They are people like us. And I walk and walk more. The more I walk deep in the jungle, I witness the cruelty and I witness the suffer. Miss Lake, you grew up in the mountains of northern Thailand. When and how was your first encounter with elephants? When I was born in the jungle, I already have seen the elephant work in locking. But I, I didn't go to jungle, so I have no idea how elephant work. But I see the big giant animal pass my house with a lot of chain in the back. And that's my first sea elephant. But I have no idea how is their life and what is behind the scene. How was your encounter after that? We have uh, the elephant that come to our uh, family mm -hmm. when I was young. And as the children, I didn't get much contact as I think elephant is one of animals and I didn't have feel deep in with them. But the time that is, uh, elephant have changed my life when I was teenage, I have been in the jungle with uh, the group. I work for the volunteer with the missionary uh, because I have to, I come from the poor family. I went to the school. Mm -hmm. uh, of the Christian school and then that is the time when I follow the, the, the group up there. One evening I heard about elephant completely screaming and I wonder what's going on with that. Uh, I heard a voice is screaming uh, around the creek. I asked, them, I asked the head man what's going on with that. The head man said elephant work in the locking and I said why are they screaming like that? He said you want to come and look? I said yes. So he take me up to the area and then at that time I saw the bull elephant so skinny pull the lock in the steep hill which is the giant timber almost the same size of him and when I uh, when I see that is I see the Mahout Mahou beat him badly and put a knife jab on his his head the blood get down and he's screaming every time he tried to go and pull that lock he's screaming and and then he's, because he don't want to be so pain, he pull all, all of his energy and, and screaming and pull that every foot that up to the steep hill is making him so painful. And the worst part that he look at me, when he's screaming, he look at me, I feel that energy. I never, I never feel strong feeling like that. The eyes that he look at me, he express angry, fear, hopeless, question why and and this this kind of thing has touched my heart after I left from that jungle I feel I feel that's so painful that he he expressed his his eye on me and I couldn't easily sleep at night because before I sleep that that noise stir in my head wake up in the morning that eyes pop up and I think no this is this won't make my life peaceful until I do something I decide to work and when I, I work, I bring the medicine to, to that boy, to that boy, and I want to go to do something to help him. When I first to go to treat him, I take him, uh, I behold my house, take him to the river and clean him and put him up. I see the skin clean, but unbelievable, all the skin that is many parts peel off, and the skin is the pus. This means his infection go to internal, mm -hmm. and it's very hard. You know, I put a medicine and I start to treat him. I, I don't, I'm not a vet, but I, I read the book and I, I contact the vet and I explain to the vet what's going on with him and I bring the, the right medicine for him. When I start to treat him, the, the owner of the elephant told me, one more elephant sick in that village, one more elephant sick in that village. Mm -hmm. And when he told me and I walk, and walk more. The more I walk deep in the jungle, I witness the cruelty and I witness the suffer. And many of them, blind, lame, or very sick elephant, they still forced to work. I ask the owner of elephant, why your elephant are so skinny, or lame, blind? Why you still work them? Mm -hmm. And some of them hardly walk. Why you still still force them to do to pull the lock? 
Uh, they said, we don't know what to do. I said, what's it mean? They have not even the veterinarian to visit them. They have no one to go and take care because they stay in the remote area. And I asked them when this elephant can rest. They said when they are falling down. Mm -hmm. And this is make me shocked and so sad. And that is touched my heart on that time. And I think that is, you know, I come from poor village. I come from the tribon. And I dream that is one day I will be, I will graduate and become the government official. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I promised my mother, uh, I'm a first woman of the tribon that goes to school and go to university. And my mother said, when I graduate, I must promise her to become an uh, official, you know, work for the government. But after I see the elephant, I just said, no, this is, this is the only way that I have to help. So I told my mother, I said, Mom, I'm sorry, I'm disappointed you because I want to go to move my way to work for elephant. And that is started in 1981. I, 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 I went back to the jungle at the time start to find out and search about the life of them, the work in the jungle. And in 1991, I created the mobile clinic I call Jumbo Express. So I hired a vet, I hired, I work hard in order to find the money and bring the vet to help them. And that mm -hmm. start of my life with elephant and they changed my life forever. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I know it was a very painful experience, I'm sure, when you saw an elephant suffering. Because at least as human beings, we can tell what is happening to us, uh, an animal which is chained and which is not able to do anything beyond it. And I'm sure this has been inspiring for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how did, it, how did this shape you as a person over a period of years? You know, everyone, everyone, no one perfect, right? So i fortunate that is I, I have a great mother. Uh, and my grandfather is who raised us with love and care to the others. My grandfather is the medicine man, and he worked for the herbal medicine, and he created the small hut and to treat people. In the old time, people doesn't have univers uh, doesn't have hospital, mm -hmm. and my grandfather collect the herb and help people. Mm -hmm. When I'm young, you know, I ask, I always ask my grandfather. I said, Why, grandpa, you wake up every morning? Mm -hmm. And then you go to collect the, the herb, herb on and medicine and bring to treat people in, in the house. And I see the people left. He doesn't make anything, but he's also smile and happy. My mother work hard and cook for them. Mm -hmm. And that's many how, many, how many people walk to our house? They stay there in our house. Mm -hmm. We share the place for them and they treat. And then they, when they get better, they go home. They're poor and they doesn't have money. And then my grandfather said, this is only happy, mm -hmm. and this is what they pay. And he told me that if, when we help someone, don't expect that is to wait someone to thank you mm -hmm. to us, but we must thank you to them to allow us to share our love to them. I quite not understand that yet, but I keep learning about my family. I keep learning about my mother. My mother always happy, mm -hmm. always positive. And she said, especially we work with someone who is sick, who uh, have a hard life, we cannot bring negative to them. Mm. We always have to stay with positive because positive can heal them and love can heal them. Mm. And this is one thing that my family uh, treat people and they allow me to have animal at home. So it's all together come along and, and make me feel in with the animal and I stay with them, raised to grow up with them and I have no war between that. Mm -hmm. You know many people is think this is animal, this is human. Right. We have a big thick war between human and animals, mm -hmm. but my mother is open the window and broke the wall for that mm -hmm. and let us to connect with animals. And I have a chicken in my bed and I, I have the dog sleep with me and then I see that it's how chicken f feel, you know, she, she loves me, she follow me mm -hmm. everywhere, even I go to the field and I can see that connection between me and the animals. Mm -hmm. It start from um, my young age. So I love animals since I'm young. So when I grow up, I feel that is the painful of everyone. You know, sometimes I feel that like, why I feel so much? Why I care so much with the mm -hmm. people? But I think that many people ask like, why you know that animal need this? I said, I always ask my, my heart, if I want anything, that animal need the same. Mm 
-hmm. And that's kind of because it's, I think there are people, they're not animal, they are people like us. And that's one of the reasons, you know. I, I didn't say that I'm a better person, but I think that is, I, I just, I think anyone can, can be a better f person if we've broken that wall. Mm -hmm. And we just think that other animal, not animal, but they are person like us. Yeah. So in other words, what you're trying to say very interestingly, that we need to build bridges, not walls, to make relationship with anybody in the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.